The idea here is to start with the first handful of broom corn, wind it as evenly as you can, all the way around the handle. The idea now is to start to widen the boom. If you were making a round boom, you would just keep going around the handle. You want to make a flat boom, the idea is to widen it. The way we do that is to start adding to the side. So instead of spreading this bundle around, we did the last one. The idea now is just to put this whole bundle on, wind the whole bundle on in one shot. Remembering to keep one's hands out from underneath the wire at all times. Same deal here. <laughs> we have to penalize him if he makes mistakes. So we just add time to his apprenticeship. Same deal here. Put that whole bundle on, find the whole bundle on in one shot. Now to make the broom wider yet, you put what's called the shoulders on the broom. That's the rounded part at the bottom. The secret here is to put this bundle on backwards like this, wind it on, and then bend it around to the front. Same deal over here. Again, just put this bundle on backwards, wind it on, and then bend it around. The idea now is to hook this whole mess to the handle. That's what the staples are all about. Put the staples across the wire and set them down into the handle. You're welcome to come closer if you want to see better. I know there was that unfortunate was incident last year, but I'm better now. No, no pictures. Okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Of course you can. Same deal over here. The secret now is to trim the excess of these shoulders off at an angle so that when you fold that shoulder back, it sits flat against the side of the broom. Then you bend these back. I use this leather band here to hold it together while I'm working on it. Now it takes another little trim here. That makes the inside of the broom. What you want to do now is put the cover of the finish coat on the outside. So you advance this wire about an inch on the handle. What I've done is I've separated the material. Use the heavy stocky part of the broom going like this in the center. It makes it strong and full and heavy, see? Then you go through them, comb out these long, thin straight ones. They call this hurl. Use them as a cover on the outside. The secret is to get this cover on as even as you can, evenly as you can. The way I do it is to spread it out along the wire first, and then just let the wire lay it on. It's my first try. Save your smile. Cover goes on in two layers, so the idea is to trim this in the back so it doesn't get too bulky here. Then put the second layer right on top, same way. Again, the idea is to get on evenly. I'm sorry? Oh yeah, they're all big brooms like this. They're big heavy brooms. The idea is to spread out along the wire, and then just let the wire lay it on. Now you can see it starts to look like a broom. Now it takes another staple to attach the cover to the handle. What I do now is take this wire buried under those ends, bring it up on the opposite side, and then turn this final little cap on the ends here. Now then, end this, take a nail, set the nail halfway down or so. Oop. 
find out my tire on the way home. Then just wrap the wire once around the nail. Put the wire off and set the nail. And just trim this on the end to make it a little more even, hopefully. I won't hit you. That's the first step in the process to get the broom on the handle. The wire is what holds the broom on the handle so it won't come off. Four rows of stitching like the finished broom simply hold the shape of the broom. So if you take the band off, the broom comes open, see? The idea now is to put them here in the sewing clamp. The sewing clamp squeezes them flat, holds them in shape while you sew. The problem is, you have to soak this material in water to make it soft so you can bend it. This broom's really wet from here down. The idea is to set them out like those back there, let the air get to them and dry them before you sew them together, see? This is a miracle of modern science. I have to have a dry one here that's ready to sew. Kind of like a cooking show. All this clamp does squeeze the broom flat, hold it in shape while you stitch. These are called sail foams or sewing foams. They use to push the needle back and forth through the broom. It's really just a thimble that fits in your hand. You use that metal dish to shove the needle. So what I do is tie a knot one end of this line, tie a needle on the other end. The idea is to start this needle through, pull it to the knot on the end, tangles in the broom. Then you go around it twice with a cord. What I have now is a double ring all the way around. The way of sew is you start under the ring on this side, push the needle through as it goes out over top of the ring on the back side. Now the same way in reverse. Underneath on this side, out over top on the other side. That's all there is to it. Under and out over, under and out over. It's really just a weave back and forth across that double ring. When you go through from one side, you go through at a sharp angle like this. When you go from the other side, you push through at an opposite angle. All these stitches cross over each other and they all lock together. Also, use a double pointed needle with the eye in the center so you don't have to turn the needle all the time in your sew. It's like the shuttle on a loom. Put it through, stick it right back through again. So you save the time. See the date these machines were made on the side here, September 10th, 1878. They're very old machines, very simple machines, but they are very well thought out. See, this metal plate's made at an angle so you can just lay the needle down on the plate and push. It always brings out above the ring on the opposite side. So when you come down to the end down here, There is an end to this. The yeah, idea is just to turn this needle back against that stitching. It makes a little lock stitch on the end. Just cinch that up tightly, flip this off and make it loose. Once you have all four rows on, the yeah, idea is to trim them so they're even on the ends. And that's the old fodder chopper hidden back there. So we use that to chop the corn and straw for the cattle. Happens to work out well for cutting the ends off the roof. It's a broom rake, it's like a curry comb. Just comb through and take out anything that's loose that doesn't belong. And this is a pair of sheep shoes. I use that to finish trimming. This particular style broom I call a sidewalk broom. It has a reed added to the middle called Palmyra. It's like bamboo. It makes them very stiff. You can scrub with these, push fast in the snow, things like that, but they're too stiff to use inside the house. Red and blue strings are all broom corn like the one I just made. They're soft, you can use them anywhere. This broom's made for the outside. All that's left now is to put my name on. Whose turn is it to lick the label? <laughs> I thought you wanted to help. Uh, maybe next time. Attention, please. That's how they're I'm just going to take up a small collection for the Broom Makers Slush Fund. Please return to the pavilion.